I think we can start with the last presentation today. It was a long day, but we, uh, before us there are two uh, events actually. One is uh, the last presentation by Pavel Fighting from IntelliJ, Scala plugin team. And uh, there will be also a discussion panel and hopefully we'll get more feedback from you and questions. So the people on the stage will be prepared to be shot by questions actually. <laughs> So uh, that's that, that's uh, that's the second thing, and actually the third thing is the after party, which will start about uh, around half past six p.m. So you should receive your information where it is and how to get there uh, on your emails. So you should you should have all the information. If you don't have any information, just grab someone from the team, and uh, someone will be able to help you. So right now, let me introduce Pavel Feitin from the IntelliJ, one, one more time, from the IntelliJ Scala plugin. And Pavel, you can start. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I need to turn on the microphone. No sound. No? Yeah, that's better. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm going to show you how the Scala plugin works uh, from inside and uh, how you can uh, extend uh, or tweak uh, the plugin code. And the presentation is uh, literally inside the Scala plugin project. Wow. So you will be able to see some uh, graphic uh, masterpieces <laughs> like this one. <laughs> and I'm using a presentation mode uh, in IntelliJ IDEA, so everything is scaled and uh, uh, also, it, uh, <laughs> it displays uh, shortcuts uh, and actions that I use, but uh, beware that Apple is a lie, because uh, I've got some windows in here. <laughs> I know, that's embarrassing. It must be Linux. So <laughs> let's start with why. Uh, why it uh, makes sense uh, to um, uh, explore that topic and uh, to contribute. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously curiosity is a good reason in itself, but uh, we believe that uh, a more practical reason is to support uh, many of uh, the Scala libraries. If you open uh, the official page, we can see that uh, there are many, many different libraries. and. Um, we personally use uh, Scala for the Scala plugin, and uh, so we can uh, leverage our experience and uh, support uh, core Scala. For example, uh, we can um, create. Uh, Uh, various uh, intentions uh, which um, for the core Scala, for example, we can uh, easily add uh, or remove type information. We can uh, transform uh, various expressions. For example, we can convert it like that. We can introduce implicit parameter and so on. So we have various ad hoc refactorings uh, which are uh, specific to place. And uh, for example, take uh, oops. Uh, so called uh, collection inspections. And uh, here we have a group of inspections that are targeted for the standard library. For example, we can simplify uh, the expression uh, and uh, continue doing that uh, until we optimize it. Oops. No, no, no. That. Like that. Uh, so as you can see, we have uh, many, many of those uh, inspections and uh, it can make you make your code uh, cleaner, faster, and can also save you a lot of time. For example, it's very easy to uh, spend hours debugging incorrect uh, argument type to contains method because compiler will tell you nothing, and you have to uh, uh, explore all the code, and it can take many hours often. 
and uh, when you have an inspection you can uh, know it right away and um, if you look at our issue tracker we can see that we have uh, more than uh, 100 inspections only for scholar collections and uh, make no mistake to create such a list uh, it takes uh, first-hand experience and uh, we cannot use all those great skull libraries in our single project because the results will be mixed best so if you often use some scholar library uh, you can um, add uh, support for that library and uh, that is basically why you can yield uh, it will yield profit for you and uh, for other developers so the plan is something like that mm -hmm. and if you decide to follow the plan uh, how to start uh, we can start uh, with project configuration just go to our github project uh, and we have a decent readme that uh, basically tells you to check out the project and to import the SBT project in IDEA. Although, in principle, you can use any text editor, I don't know, but that's kind of a strange use case. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, we also have a special Scalasphere branch uh, on the GitHub, uh, so it contains all the code examples. So if you want to revisit anything, feel free to check out the branch. Here I have already uh, imported and uh, pre-compiled the project to save time and uh, when uh, you do the same you can uh, start uh, idea run configuration which will uh, launch an another instance of idea that is uh, separate from the main idea so it has a different configuration and uh, it will contain the custom plugin which is built from sources here we can uh, see the list of plugins and we can see that we have a development version of the skull plugin and uh, you can try uh, right away anything you want to try which is which must be customized and uh, let's try to implement a simple inspection which simplifies algebraic expressions so it's a classical task from compiler construction can and you also uh, do a presentation mode please uh, there, there is oops, there is nothing important here i i'm going to close that idea because here's the main idea so how to start uh, because uh, the plugin is uh, built on top of the idea platform we can open platform documentation and here we can find uh, various uh, good tutorials uh, architectural reference and so on amazing documentation let's start from the beginning let's continue our reading from here oh wait Real programmers don't read documentation. <laughs> it only spoils all the fun. So don't do that. <laughs> Never ever. We can go straight to the plugin descriptor. <laughs> uh, there, there is nothing. And uh, as we can see, uh, we have uh, in the plugin descriptor various uh, extensions, which is uh, a, a standardized <coughs> way to extend IDEA platform. We can uh, explore them by using autocompletion. For example, here's how we can see that there, there is a lot of stuff here. Or we can just uh, search for for example, let's search for inspection. So here's a list of inspections. Let's create a new inspection. And here's a professional way to do that. 
wow, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, only because I uh, predefined uh, live templates. <laughs> so uh, we can save time and uh, do something more essential. So basically, we just uh, declared a new uh, inspection, and let's go to the implementation. Uh, let's also use uh, a live template to paste the code. Uh, and uh, here we have a method, uh, and we need to find the correct element is that in that method and optionally to register a problem uh, highlighting. And how do we know what to look for? So one way is obvious to open a Scala language specification and to look for um, grammar and uh, for example, it is an infix expression, something like one plus two, but that's obviously too complicated and hopefully there is a better way and we can use a so-called PSI viewer which uh, will show you the heart of uh, idea model which is um, PSI. PSI is program structure interface and to launch the PSI viewer we can use tools menu but uh, keep in mind that it is uh, an internal action so to use internal actions we need to to set that property to true and then you will be able to use internal actions and by the way there are oops, seems like microphone is gone And uh, there are many more useful internal actions. Uh, for example, oops, maybe that's this one maybe not expected. Let's try it. Uh, <laughs> it's something in the presentation one. Well, yeah, drop an error. That does exactly what it tells. <laughs> That's an error. <laughs> so if you have not enough uh, interesting uh, exceptions in idea, you can always rely on that. But uh, still keep in mind that it is not yet production ready. So some glitches might be expected. So let's start the PSI viewer. And uh, here we need to select a file type, which is Scala for us. And uh, we can uh, type a desired expression. Uh, let's type uh, some code <coughs> and uh, build the PCI tree. And uh, here we have something like, uh, which basically is the same as Scala meta. Uh, that's because we have uh, all the formatting, all the white space is preserved, and we can also uh, access com comment from the class element and because uh, the model is object oriented we don't have to iterate a token stream we can just uh, call get name or get comment on the class and it's that simple and if you if we modify that tree uh, programmatically we auto idea automatically formats all the text uh, according to rules of formatting. So, so it's not abstract syntax tree, it's uh, something slightly different. And uh, he, here lays the power of idea. So let's, let's try our expression. Let's <coughs> hide the white spaces and uh, call trivia. And um, we can see that it's just an infix expression, just simple thing. And we can use tooltip to see the implementation class. So let's go to that implementation class. And, um, and here we have uh, a convenient extractor that uh, can be used to extract uh, 
parts of that expression. So operation, operators, and so on. But the main class is enough. Now let's let's use that extractor. So now we have uh, left operand, right operand. We can see the types. So it's already uh, integers, and we can compute the sum, and then uh, invoke the replacement quick fix, which uh, under the hood uh, just parses uh, the text and replaces the node in the tree. And uh, as you can see, we can also uh, parse uh, some text very easily just with one call. Uh, let's try to use that simplified version of the inspection. <coughs> so now we have a highlighting, and if we invoke uh, Replacement quick fix, we can simplify the expression so it's just a little bit of code and uh, some nice inspection here. And uh, because uh, it's not uh, practical to always launch idea uh, to check something, we can uh, use tests for that. Um, test. I have already prepared uh, the test cases to save time. And we can um, use the test to guide our progress. So let's implement uh, other operators. That's how we can do that. We can uh, use uh, element text extractor uh, because our tree uh, already associated with uh, ranges and with text in the document. Uh, and we can see the implementation, which is basically a call to get text, so nothing complicated. And then we can use that string to uh, get the correct function from our map, and then apply the arguments. And that's also quite simple. But uh, have you noticed the potential problem here? And uh, I mean, division by zero mm -hmm. and also possible n numerical overflow but that's not a problem because as the old saying goes no exception no problem <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, let's, uh, let's what go. happens if you divide by zero uh, you will get uh, something like that uh, drop an error Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could, but uh, a little bit later, I, uh, I'm going what, to... What happens if I define my own method, which is called cross, but which doesn't do addition? Sorry? If I define a, a method, which is called cross, but it's not the addition, it's another method, like it's another of cross. So it's much so you you need to to implement that uh, differently, I suppose. So you need to handle that. That's a simplified uh, version of the expression. It's not real code, so you need to consider that. So let's return to the test. So we have a test which uh, which checks some unknown operator and. Uh, and now let's let's implement the inspection for uh, more complex expressions, which is compound expressions. And if you run the PSA viewer, for example, like that, we can see that uh, there is a nesting, and because that's an arbitrary nesting, we need to use recursion to handle that. Let's do exactly that. Mm. 
so what changed now we isolated uh, the extractor which uh, refers to itself <coughs> internally and we are using that extractor to uh, uh, check for elements and uh, it, it looks about right but uh, if you're oops that's not the test I have to close it but uh, the tests uh, will fail and uh, that's because uh, inspection is uh, run for every piece element and uh, we just a second close it And because of the recursion, we need to check for plain literals. So we are going to highlight all the literals and also all the internal nodes of sub-expressions. And that's not exactly what we need. So let's run the test. By the way, the idea fixture initialization takes some time, but subsequent tests run faster. So here we have some errors, and now, now let's solve it. We can do that by introducing guards. So if you have a simple literal or parent, which is an another extractor which calls the parent under the hood. Uh, we will just do nothing, and otherwise we will highlight. Um, so let's go to the test <coughs> and see that next we need to to handle expression in parentheses. And uh, why parentheses are different? Because, for example, in compiler, parentheses are just uh, a way to specify precedence during parsing. And uh, as I told you before, in idea, uh, everything uh, which is visible and even not visible is in the PSI tree. So if you open it, you can see that we have uh, uh, an intermediate element. So it's not just about uh, order of parsing. So we need to handle that. And uh, we can do that by just processing uh, expression, which is inside the parentheses. So nothing special. And also we need to update the guards. Uh, let's run the test. And uh, the next uh, test case is slightly different because uh, we would like to be able to uh, use references in uh, our expressions. And uh, <coughs> references basically is some way to find target of the symbol. And uh, we can do that by using a resolve. Uh, that's how it calls called an idea, and uh, there is also nothing complicated here. Excuse me, could you please uh, copy this uh, reference example into PS Viewer so we can see how it's represented there? Sorry. Could you? Hi, uh, I have a small request. Could you please copy this small expression uh, representing this reference to the V well, uh, to the PSI viewer, so we can show it how it's represented, because it's quite interesting for me. Okay, Thank you. okay, I will do it just just on the next step. So that's that's already intended. So. Uh, So here's how we can call resolve from pattern matching, and uh, that's, that's also simple. We just call resolve on the element, so we just have a helper 
extractor. And uh, here's uh, where I show, sh I'm going to show the expression because it's not uh, so apparent uh, why we need something like uh, two parents uh, buff and then call some expression. Let's, let's see how it's parsed. Uh, for example, we have value equals, and then we are uh, referencing that value. So reference is just uh, reference, yeah. and uh, yeah. we can see that it's listed as reference, and uh, everything that uh, inherits a base interface in ID that is reference automatically handled by ID, so we can navigate, uh, search for usages and so on. And the more interesting part is uh, that value definition, because value definitions in Scala are quite tricky. So we can, for example, write something like, like that. And that's a legitimate statement in Scala. And uh, so that's why we need to do something more complicated. So we have a list of patterns, and we have uh, some pattern here. So we need to get a second parent to get the pattern definition statement. And that's what we are doing here. And we, uh, we are getting the expression on the right side and processing it uh, just like any other expression. So if we run the test, it should be green. And the final touch is types. And uh, we can use types to optimize our inspection because we, tr we are trying to process all kinds of uh, expressions. For example, we can try to process string ex expressions. And IDEA already pre-computes all types. So it knows type of uh, reference. It uh, knows type of uh, any expression. And uh, that info is cached. So we can use we can use uh, that information to speed up our <coughs> our code. And uh, here, how we can do that? We can call expression type, and if type is not integer type, we are even uh, not trying to continue. So it's just about speed. So now let's try to launch the idea because unit tests are great, but seeing something with our own eyes is priceless. I will enable presentation mode and then here. Well, let's compute something slightly more complicated. For example, by X. I don't know. For example. You can try to compute without the calculator. So we can check that. <laughs> for example, so I suggest uh, <laughs> that answer, <laughs> that must be correct. <laughs> but uh, here we have some problem. Uh, we have too many highlightings. And uh, in real code, we might not want uh, to highlight such expressions. Yet, we might want to be able to calculate expressions. And uh, we can do exactly that by implementing uh, so-called intention instead of inspection. <coughs> and that's how we can do that. So let's return to the plugin descriptor and, uh, and declare 
an intention and we can just disable inspection or we can do that in idea and we can use a special adapter uh, which adapts our inspection uh, to be used uh, as an intention because internally they are very similar but uh, API is different let's rerun the idea And here I prepared a more complicated uh, calculation. Here it is. <laughs> and uh, this time we can simplify and we know immediately that answer is right. So <laughs> what is the <laughs> question is ugly. So basically that's all the information and uh, that's not enough to make you an expert idea developer but enough to get started thank you so let's move ahead to the discussion panel which is which is uh, which is actually the next uh, the next part of today